Uh, allow me then, Minister, to just make a few opening remarks. Uh, then uh, again, Excellency Dr. Biruta, High Commissioner Mpatwa, High Commissioner Kayahura, members of the Rwandan delegation, and senior officials from the department in South Africa. I'd like once more, Minister, to repeat my great joy at receiving you in our department, and I'd like to welcome you once more to South Africa, and I wish you a pleasant and fruitful stay. Of course, this is a very short visit, so I hope you'll come back uh, and, and have a much longer time in our country. Our meeting is long overdue, not only because we were instructed by our presidents over a year ago to meet, but also because our people of South Africa and Rwanda expect us to meet and strengthen cooperation between our two countries. I believe that today marks the beginning of a process which will lead to the full restoration and normalization of diplomatic relations between our two countries. As the South African government, we firmly believe that strengthening and normalizing bilateral relations between South Africa and Rwanda would go a long way toward creating a basis for further collaboration in key development priority areas. Our country, South Africa and Rwanda, are countries that are very clearly pursuing progressive development outcomes focused on entrenching democracy, inclusive development and economic growth. Inadequacies in our diplomatic relations have held back the potential to unlock greater trade and investment opportunities, have limited government-to-government -government engagements in support of business activity, and have reduced essential collaboration in a regional and in multilateral uh, platforms. These challenges that we've experienced over the past few years have not allowed us to effectively use instruments that had previously been agreed upon to facilitate this very important, in my view, relationship. For example, we've not really had active meetings of our joint commission for cooperation, no implementation of our general cooperation agreement. The JCC, I'm told, last met more than five years ago, and I believe this doesn't reflect well on a relationship that should be between close brothers and sisters. Minister, I'm very, very hopeful that your working visit will ensure a full opportunity for us to commence a process of frank and solution-driven engagement, which will lead to the normalization of diplomatic relations. We had worked very, very well previously as South Africa and Rwanda with respect to the Cuban Medical uh, Brigade Program, which had been aimed at rendering health services to the people of Rwanda. That project was a trilateral health project between South Africa, Cuba, and Rwanda, which had begun in 2004. It, of course, came to a successful end but I believe it remains a model for our cooperation and is something that we should celebrate and seek to uh, mirror even today. We also made many gains in the advancement of our cooperation in the field of education, which enabled our sister countries to benefit from such collaboration by producing graduates in a number of critical fields such as commerce and medicine. I even recall when I was Minister of Education discussing with the Minister of Education at that time the possibility of borrowing uh, Rwandan mathematics teachers. We have a huge gap in South Africa of such teachers and we had hoped uh, uh, that we would have such a project. So I believe that uh, the opportunities for cooperation between our two countries are immense, uh, that we could not emphasize, overemphasize them, but that they should guide our deliberations today. We've also been very significant partners in advancing and championing the African agenda by being, for example, among the first countries that volunteered 
to be scrutinized through the African peer review mechanism, as well as by actively contributing troops to African peacekeeping missions across the continent. I believe that the matters that led to a cooling in our relations can be resolved by the two of us, because we didn't lead to them anyway. And I hope our cooperation commitment will allow us always to be able to be frank and open in exchanges between us. I think this visit, Minister, as I said in our earlier meeting, should be used to come up with ways aimed at ensuring we are both confident that both countries are protecting our sovereignty and our integrity as countries on the continent. I am pleased that both our delegations include officials who have the seniority to address the current challenges. I didn't know that heads of intelligence have advisors, but I'm really glad that the advisor is here because he will be able, you know, because intelligent people do their own thing, you know. Uh, but I'm really happy the advisor is here because I believe um, that they will assist us. In this regard, uh, Minister, and being a person who's very practical in orientation, I would like to propose in this meeting that you and I should become a joint mechanism and that our joint mechanism must be supported by the creation of a technical task team which will be led by senior officials to discuss a set of measures that need to be implemented as part of re-energizing our collaboration. The team can develop some form of MOU or letter of intent on key actions that we would agree as the chairs, the joint mechanism, actions that will create the basis for putting behind us all that has been a challenge and clearly setting out that we have a concrete desire to move forward in a clearly principled manner. We are keen as directed by my president uh. Ramaphosa to cooperate with Rwanda in many socio-economic development challenges that confront our two countries and which we believe we have the capacity to resolve. Businesses from South Africa are already investing in the Rwandan economy and there are more that have indicated to me they want to do so. In the spirit of the African continental free trade area, our trade needs to be enhanced for the benefit of both our countries and our peoples. This will only happen if our relations are restored as per the original excellent intentions we had when our countries established diplomatic relations in 1995, right at the inception of our democracy. Minister, I think we also need to work together with more like-minded countries across the continent and the world in making sure that our people get access to COVID-19 vaccines and to ensure that more countries on the continent attain the required capacity to produce these vaccines. We believe as South Africa this is very important because available research has clearly indicated that no one country has the capacity to support the whole world with the vaccines that are needed. You would know the views of President Ramaphosa that he has communicated in open fora that uh, we would like to see the WTO relax the regulations around intellectual property in order to allow our countries, particularly South Africa, Rwanda, Kenya, Senegal, Nigeria, Egypt, and Tunisia, which have vaccine producing capability, access to the IP, access to technology transfer to produce vaccines, diagnostics, and other treatment and equipment associated with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So Minister, in conclusion, essentially my message is that we need each other as partners so that we can together positively influence sustainable development in our two countries, in our regions, as well as on the continent. 
you might be aware, Minister, of my uh, deep desire that uh, we should no longer, as African countries, be attending G20, G7, that we should have Africa 20, mm -hmm. Africa 7. I've whispered this to President Kagame, and I think his smile indicates he agrees with me. But I haven't got a president yet who's implementing uh, my dream. I think Africa must stand for herself. And if you and I can work on persuading our heads of state, that let's identify 20 African countries that will be the spur to development for Africa, and they become a consistent leader we, I think, will advance our continent. So I hope you will whisper in President Kagame's ear this dream of mine, so that we do begin to build a different Africa that doesn't depend on anyone. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank you. Your Excellency, um, ladies and gentlemen, let me first of all uh, express my sincere gratitude to the government of South Africa for the warm hospitality extended to myself and my delegation since we arrived in South Africa yesterday. Your Excellency, you will recall that in February 2020 in Addis Ababa, our two heads of state met and instructed us to work on uh, normalization of diplomatic relations between both our countries. And uh, it is my hope that this working visit will be a step forward in uh, that direction and that we will be able to agree on the mechanism we need to put in place uh, for us to be able to implement uh, the directives of both our president and I totally agree with you that we need to revive the joint permanent commission between our two countries we have a certain number of MOUs and agreement in various sectors including the, one, the ones you mentioned education health and many others and we need to revive that uh, joint permanent commission to be able to strengthen our relations in a more formal way. And uh, we need to restore that relation uh, to be able to work uh, government to government, but we need also to look at uh, business to business, and we need to be able to facilitate that to happen. Because as a government, you can always meet, you can uh, even agree to work together on this international agenda, but it will not uh, help much if our business people cannot meet, if they cannot discuss about trade and investment opportunities. We need to just to push forward and uh, make sure that uh, there is even that people-to-people -people relationship. Uh, otherwise, just be about us talking about uh, other things but not really about our people and we need to facilitate that relation to support our efforts as governments. Um, in uh, Rwanda we have been uh, struggling with COVID-19 and eventually that will be one of uh, the reasons we give to our heads of state when they ask us why we didn't implement uh, <laughs> the directives <laughs> in February 2020, uh, but that uh, even COVID-19 should be for us uh, something we can uh, uh, work on together to be able to find lasting solutions. We have been discussing about uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccines ma manufacturing, and you have uh, referred to it in your remarks, and we need to really even use these challenges as uh, opportunities for us to, to work together. Yes, we, had, we have had a vibrant uh, bilateral relations between our two countries, but there have been challenges uh, since now more than 10 years. But uh, challenges have been there, and eventually in the future we will have other challenges. But uh, 
a strong relationship is that one which can help to deal with challenges when, whenever they come up. And uh, that's life. We cannot avoid challenges. But if we have a sincere relationship, uh, we can talk to each other, we can, our various department can talk to each other, and we find ways to address challenges. Uh, they can, there could be challenges between in our relation as countries. There can be challenges uh, on our continent, we can work together to, to, to resolve. But uh, that needs us to have that sincerity in a, that uh, kind of um, just uh, a candid relationship. And uh, we need to have that sincere relationship which can allow us to deal with any, any challenge, uh, whatever, uh, whatever it could be. And, uh, I think, I believe, that is possible. And uh, we have many, many challenges on the continent. Mm. And I believe Rwanda and South Africa can lead in uh, finding solutions for these uh, challenges, in, in, including, including security challenges we have been talking about. Uh, Mozambique, mm. there are challenges in the Central African Republic, mm. Rwanda is uh, is there and uh, South Africa is intervening in the DRC and uh, if we put our efforts together I think we can uh, find solutions. We have proposed uh, kind of Africa 20 or uh, let's start with a G2 mm. Africa. <laughs> that G2 will be Rwanda and South Africa mm. and we'll be able to bring on board other three uh, additional 10 and uh, eventually reach our G20 Africa. Mm. But let's agree that South Africa and Rwanda lead on that great idea, and uh, start. Uh, let's start by giving uh, the example that will uh, help us to lead others. So I believe we have uh, a lot to share between both countries, and both our countries have a lot to contribute to our continent, and we need to agree that we just lead. Uh, by example, and uh, we'll be able to bring on board others. And we'll be willing to be inspired by what we are. We'll be doing together. I agree with uh, your proposal to constitute a joint mechanism between our countries, and that joint mechanism to be supported by a technical task team. But. Uh, I hope that uh, during this visit we'll be able to say who and who in the task team and to give them clear terms of reference and, uh, and um, a deadline for, for us to be able to, to monitor and make sure that they are doing what, what we have uh, tasked them to mm. do. Mm. And make sure that uh, every time we meet we, we can monitor the progress. And um, that deadline should be as short as possible, yeah. in, my, in my view. If we, we agree on uh, the way forward and if we agree on what we need to achieve, the best will be very easy for the task team to, to lead us there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Your Excellency, once again, thank you, and I look forward to fruitful deliberations during this meeting. Mm -hmm. and, um, Let's just make sure that uh, we are making a big step towards restoring uh, the relationship between our country, towards normalizing uh, the diplomatic relations between Rwanda and South Africa. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Excellency.